What up, what up, world? I am Decent, and welcome back to another edition of Pop Dust Presents. Now, my guest at this time, if you can take a look at his shirt, definitely some Bronx nepotism going on. <laughs> of course, gang, gang, gang. Bronx native. Bronx native all day, every day. He is a master at all things music, and he has a very, very interesting story to tell. And fun fact, it's actually coming up on the one year anniversary of your latest release, Trilogy. Yeah. With no further ado, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Alex of Conversing with Oceans. Woo! <laughs> Brother man. Thank you. That was a very kind introduction. Thank you. Appreciate uh, it. I'll, I'll work on these. It's, it's my life's work. But man, thank you for stopping by. You know, so to kind of give a little context of how I know Alex. Um, Bronx Connection, you've seen plenty of people featured on Pop Does that are brought through there from the Bronx, Anthony Anderson, Durier, Royal Chaos, so he's kind of in that same lineage of dope Bronx musicians, so I figured i have him on and show you guys that the Bronx is dope as fuck if you don't know already, but tell people a little bit about yourself, man. Yeah, so I go by Conversing with Oceans, that's that's the name of the band. My name is Alex Bondarev. Um, I guess I'll tell a little bit of, of my story. I uh, came here as a refugee uh, from Russia back when they were at war with Chechnya when I was eight years old and um, grew up in the Bronx, so I'm not, you know, technically a Bronx native, but I considered Bronx to be the place that, like, was my home home, you know? Um, it, was, it was a safe place. It was a beautiful place. It was a place where, you know, I was introduced to all sorts of music, everything from Fuji's at the time to Wu-Tang and then to making rock music with Chris in Catholic school. So music like was an anchor for me growing up. Um, started playing just just by myself at home uh, in grammar school. And you're self-taught, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we always had like a guitar at our house or something. And my, my grandparents back in Russia would play the piano. And I remember I used to dance and sing. That was like some of my earliest memories. Um, but we kind of not having a whole lot of stability and moving from place to place a lot when we were little. Music was was my home. That was like my anchor. So when we came to the Bronx, that kind of came right with us. And um, in Catholic school, we connected, me, Chris, and, and you know, uh, the guys I grew up playing music with because of the bands we listened to, because of the music connection. Throughout that time, um, I guess the music kind of grew and grew. We got busier with that. And the Bronx Underground actually started yeah. around that time as well. Mm -hmm. And so we were coming up, getting to play shows when we were like 14 and 15 years old, which was such a blessing. And now that that's back up and running again, that's a, a whole other thing that's great to see. Um, but yeah, I mean, just, just been, been doing music ever since, just been going. And, and now the, the latest evolution of it is Conversing with Oceans. Awesome, awesome. So once again, you're a refugee. What was that whole experience like being so young and pretty much coming from another place on the other side of the globe to come here to New York and to the Bronx exclusively? like? How did that play into you as a musician and as a man? Because I can imagine, you know, experiencing like that, something like that so young and then being able to take all those experiences and being able to kind of find this outlet once you got a little bit settled. What was that whole transition like for you? Well, I have to give it to my parents because they did a good job of, of like shielding us from the actual war that was going on. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad actually had a job in India. Um, while we lived in Russia and we would travel back and forth between the two as a translator. He just took this job just because he always wanted to work in India. Didn't pay a lot of money, but he just really wanted to live there. That actually saved our lives because when we'd go back to Russia, we'd notice it get a little worse and worse. It was Chechnya at the time, but it was still part of the Soviet Union. We considered Russia. But I remember one summer my grandparents called and they were like, you can't go home this summer because they're firing machine wow. guns outside of the window and there's tanks on the streets. Wow. So you guys got to go somewhere else. And by the grace of God, we had family here in the Bronx. Um, me, I, so I didn't, thankfully, I didn't see the machine guns. I didn't see the tanks. It was just the conversations that we had. And you know, maybe last couple of times when we visited Russia, especially in Moscow, we were like, we can't go outside right now. It's, it's, it's just bad. We, we cannot be outside. Um, you know, long story short, my, where my grandparents lived and where we visited, that town got completely demolished, like leveled. Um, it's built back up since. Thank, thank God they were safe. You know, they, they left everything behind. Uh, but 
I wonder about how it affected me to this day, mm. you know? I, I think that's a big question. Uh, certainly, certainly that feeling of, of being from different places is not, and not, and not knowing what like your, your physical, physical home is. Mm -hmm. I think that's always played in, you know, out in me as an artist. Just, just that whole concept of home, just trying to, trying to figure out what that really means, you know, if it's not a place. Yeah. But it's also where you make it, and it's also who your family is, and it's also what you do. Yeah. You know, so for me, that's been my family, that's been music, and that's been the Bronx. Definitely, and I think a lot of people can relate to that because, you know, once again, home, in a sense, is a feeling for a lot of people, and a lot of us seek home in different mediums and different means. It could be in, you know, something creative. It could be, you know, in a relationship. It doesn't necessarily have to be a physical place, but for you to feel like you found the home in the Bronx and, you know, you took in all of these experiences and channeled it into becoming the artist and the man and the musician that you are today is super, super dope, man. But, thank you. you know, enough of the sentimental crap. Let's get in to you and this project that you've released over a year ago. Uh -huh. Now, you guys have, you know, like you said, it's pretty much a, I don't want to say a passion project, but it's pretty much been an experimental project that is pretty much taking you to, like, different, I want to say different avenues and lanes that you might not have if you played the specific kind of music. What prompted you to come up with the concept of doing Conversing with Oceans? Sure, so part of that was I grew up in a band setting, like a loud rock punk band coming up from the Bronx Underground. We you know, played shows all the time, we had a loud sound, and, and they were my best friends that when we got together, it was such a formula for how we would make a song that like when I put something in, they would just make this awesome song, of this big rock song. And after a while, just as an artist, you start thinking creatively like, what if maybe I didn't have this band? What about all these other ideas that, that are you know, kind of coming to me right now? What if I tried to do something else with them? What if I tried to sit on my own and, and see this song as kind of I imagined it? Right. So that was kind of the birth of Conversing with Oceans. And the name came from um, that, that conversation that we had a little earlier where I was like thinking about what home is. Like, you know, I, I felt like I was torn between continents for like a good, good chunk of my life. And also just, just water, just being by the water is very inspiring to me. That's where a lot of uh, ideas I've had come from, like where, I don't know, I just feel, feel at peace, you know? I feel like th there's really been a connection with me always to that. So Conversing with Oceans was born and I hit up a couple of my friends and, and uh, actually Chris, who I didn't play with for a long time, who played with me earlier, I, you know, I said, you know, I'm doing some songs, they're different. I'm playing around on my synthesizer a lot. I'm just making beats. Um, I don't know what the genre is, but would you help me out? Would you help me see these songs through? And he said, sure. Because he's like literally one of the most creative people I know. He could play every instrument. Um, just, just like a genius, like natural genius when it comes to music. And I knew that, that he would kind of feel where I was going and be mm -hmm. able to take that to a different place like I wanted. Awesome, awesome. So you guys released your first single in 2016, Gold Rush. Mm -hmm. What was that whole experience like, you know, taking this new sort of identity, this new music and releasing it to everyone? Was it excitement? Was it anxiousness? What was it like? It was a little bit of both. Uh, like, we, again, for a long time, for many years, I was just putting out rock songs and they were heavy and big and like, you know, just, just super loud songs that were fun to play live. And this song was more reserved. It's more laid back. It's more um, synth and pop driven. And so putting that out as like a contrast to what I've been putting out it was definitely scary because it felt like very raw. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know if people are going to dig it. But thankfully, it landed us some awesome opportunities that like when, when we released it almost right away, um, we, were, we were hit up by uh, Randy Jackson's team for South by Southwest. They heard the, tea, the song and, and they were like, oh, come, come play this song. And at that point, I was like, OK, we're doing something right. We're doing something right. I got to keep following my gut. So ultimately, I was just like, I just got to keep going this course. Awesome, awesome. So once again, a year ago, you released Trilogy. And the interesting thing about Trilogy is the fact that it's a concept, it seems, but it's going in reverse. So part one is actually part three, mm -hmm. which is the first song on the project. What was the whole thought process in putting that together? Because it's very, very abstract, but mm -hmm. it's still super, super dope. You know, um, what was 
the thought process going in? Was this done intentionally or was it something that just kind of came together on its own once you guys started putting songs yeah. together? Um, both. I mean, I had this idea from the beginning mm. uh, of, you ever watch a movie and it's kind of told in reverse? Yeah, and, yeah. Quentin Tarantino does it all yeah. the time. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that. And I was just thinking about that with music, that kind of concept where it's like a picture, a picture, a picture. It's kind of told in reverse order, but at the end it kind of comes together. Mm -hmm. So that was the whole concept with, uh, with that. That's what makes good art. I feel like, you know, of course, as an artist, you have a message, you have an intent when you put it out, but if other people can get other things out of it, then mission accomplished. One of the things that you talked about in the beginning of you know, us sitting down was you're a fan of Fuji's, and you actually got the opportunity to work with John Forte. How was that? How did that happen? What was that whole experience like? like? Yeah, that, that was kind of like a whirlwind. That was a lot of fun. Um, John's a super chill, awesome dude. And the, the cool story with the Fugees was when we first moved to the Bronx, um, we were living in Co-op City, and there, there was something called the Co-op City Fair that they had. Yeah. And, <laughs> and we would go every summer. There was like this huge thing. And I remember we were walking through the fair, and I saw all these tapes. And I heard the Fugees on the radio, but I didn't know, you know, um, I didn't know, um, I didn't know that, th that that was their tape until like yeah. my, my friend was with me and like he pointed to me. He's like, that's the Fugees. And he told me about the songs they played. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm a refugee, the, the Fugees, that's cool. So I got the tape and I listened to that tape. And now I think about it that the fact that I listened to that song when I was, uh, that record, when I was so young, I was like, oh God, my parents did not give a shit about <laughs> what I was listening to. Um, def definitely some mature content in there, but it's a beautiful record and it still holds up over time. Tell us a little bit about, um the Tiny Bronx project? So Tiny Bronx was born out of the idea, um, kind of how we were talking about earlier, that there's just so much talent in the Bronx. There really is. Mm -hmm. And so uh, NPR and the Tiny Desk Contest, they do this thing. I think it's like the second or third year now that they've done it. But they invite artists to submit videos and songs. So thankfully, a venue called Jimmy Ryan's in the Bronx, they were mm -hmm. nice enough to give us a space to do like a monthly residency there shows. So. We have a friend that does video, we have a friend that does sound, and we kind of make these shows happen. So instead of like the Tiny Desk contest, I was like thinking, why don't we do the Tiny Bronx and just make it all artists from the Bronx and just show them that like, hey, look, like you guys are taking artists from everywhere, but the, the Bronx has so much talent in, you know, in it, and, and you guys have to see this. So that, that's kind of how it was born. That should be the model for the Bronx. The Bronx has so much talent. You guys should see this. Yeah. So what do you have coming up next, man? I know we talked a little bit about something that you got in the works, so tell the people what's up your sleeve if you can. Uh, sure. So we're working on our very first full-length album right now, and this is a special one because uh, Johnny, our bassist, uh, Danny, who's an amazing drummer, Chris, we all went to the studio um, with our friends and just, just put together a full-length record that actually is like, the culmination of everything we've been kind of growing into and building as Conversing with Oceans. And I'm so excited about this because the songs are all over the place like they've been, but they're, they're all so thematic and connected and they're big. And at the same time, we have songs that, that I'm like still scared that I even wrote. Like, it's like so vulnerable. And I'm like, you know, like, can I say this? You know, that kind of feeling. So I'm really excited for it. We have, um, Nate Fox, who's like a, uh, been a dream of mine to work with as well, he's mixing the record. Uh, we have some really, really great collaborations on it. Elu, who's like this phenomenal rock jazz pianist, the creator of rock jazz. Um, so it's just, just some really cool stuff on this album, and I'm very proud of it. And it's almost done, thank God. So that, that's going to be our next thing. We're going to release this album, and then we're going to roll with the waves. Awesome, awesome. Well, Alex, man, thank you so much for stopping by once again. Trilogy is out now on all streaming platforms. And thank you so yeah, much thank you, for stopping thank you, Bob by. Dust. Once again, I am Decent. This has been another edition of Pop Dust Presents. Make sure you follow us on all social media at Pop Dust. Make sure you visit our website, popdust.com. And make sure you subscribe to our YouTube and make sure you click that little bell at the top so that way you can be notified of all new content going up. Thank you so much, guys. We will see you soon.